controversial proposal. He is beginning uh, to awaken uh, and it appears that his neurological uh, condition and function is intact. And doctors say Buffalo Bills safety Damar Hamlin is awake and talking. We'll hear from a former St. Louis Rams medical director. A nice quiet day across the region, but we do have some rain on the way. We'll let you know when it will get here and how long it will last. Thank you so much for joining the Power of Two. I'm Amelia McGalvro in for Kim Hudson. The Illinois House passes a controversial bill this morning during a lame duck session. That bill would ban many semi-automatic firearms statewide, but the bill is not law yet. The Power of Two's Chris Renier is in East St. Louis breaking down all the details. The bill is called the Protect Illinois Communities Act. Supporters say it helps to make Illinois safer, but opponents argue that the legislation hurts legal gun owners. Take a look at video from the Illinois House. The bill passing 64 to 43 with only one Republican voting yes. That vote coming a little before one o'clock this morning. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker supports the bill and was on hand for the entire House debate. The bill bans the manufacturing, selling and possession of certain assault weapons in Illinois. It also bans high capacity ammunition magazines. Current owners of assault weapons would have 300 days to register them with the state. There were some changes to the legislation before it passed. The original bill prevented most people under 21 from receiving a firearm owner's identification card. That age limit was lowered to 18 with a parent's consent. The original bill also banned ammunition magazines that held more than 10 rounds. That provision was loosened a bit to 12 rounds. The entire measure was prompted by the mass shooting at last year's 4th of July parade in Highland Park that left seven people dead and several more injured. Lawmakers on both sides of the issue spoke about the legislation. You are turning legal gun owners with this bill into felons. These are weapons that belong on a battlefield, not at parades or parks or schools or churches. The state Senate is expected to take up the bill today. Its fate there remains uncertain. Reporting in East St. Louis, I'm Chris Renier. Now to clarify, the bill specifically refers to assault weapons and it reads in part, this bill makes it unlawful to manufacture, deliver, sell or purchase or cause to be manufactured, delivered, sold or purchased or cause to be possessed by another, an assault weapon, assault weapon attachment, 50 caliber rifle or 50 caliber cartridge. As for the Safety Act, it will be March before the Illinois Supreme Court hears arguments. The Safety Accountability, Fairness and Equity Today Act was enacted by Illinois lawmakers in 2021. One of its main rules would make Illinois the first state in the nation to abolish cash bail as the standard of pretrial detention. A judge has since ruled eliminating cash bail is unconstitutional. The state appealed to the Supreme Court and the high court ordered all countries to delay or all counties, excuse me, to delay getting rid of cash bail until a final ruling is issued. On the crime watch now, a St. Louis man pleads guilty in federal court to killing a bank security guard. That was during a robbery at First Bank in East St. Louis back in 2021. 23 year old Jalen Quinn admitted to shooting Ted Horn. His co-defendant Andre Brinkley has already pleaded guilty to bank robbery charges. Both men were arrested after Brinkley's father told authorities that his son looked a lot like the men in the surveillance video. Quinn and Brinkley will be sentenced at a later date. A power of two follow up now on a deadly double shooting in Franklin County. A couple was shot and killed outside their own home Wednesday night. The shooting was reported around 730 at the couple's home in the 2400 block of Spring Valley Road. Investigators say the man was 39 year old Ronald Junian. He died at the scene and the woman was 34 year old Leslie Barstow. She died at a hospital. Residents of Pacific say they're absolutely shocked to hear of the murders happening in their small community. It's awful, but you see a lot of that going on in a lot of places. Rural areas aren't exempt anymore. You know, used to you hear about it in the city, but it's filtered out this way now.
Franklin County. No suspects have been named yet, but investigators say they don't think the shooting was random. If you have any information on these murders, you're asked to call the Franklin County Sheriff's Office. The wave of break-ins continues across the St. Louis region, but investigators say there is a trail of evidence that could slow the crime trend. The Power of Two's Andy Banker has that story. Evangeline's is open again after a fourth break-in here in less than a year. The owner says this time the suspects tried to smash through the door. When that didn't work, they went for the big window. We've been here 10 years and nine years we never got broke into. And the last year we've been broke into four times since last April. He says there's never any money left behind for the burglars to steal, but they leave behind thousands of dollars in damage every time. Police also responded to a break-in at a gas station on Shoto, along with one at a portrait studio on South Broadway, the Boom Boom Room Burlesque Lounge on Washington Avenue downtown, and Cocina Latina next door to Evangeline's, all within a three-hour span. But it's so bad, it's so bad to be in this uh, just right after Christmas and be working so hard after the pandemic and have these people coming in to uh, break it more than taking much of a stuff do so much damage. Those crimes come within 48 hours of a break in at Denny Dennis Sporting Goods in Fenton. The ATF is offering a $5,000 reward after five suspects stole multiple firearms there. Those suspects used two vehicles. Investigators are looking into similarities at Evangeline's, where there were also five suspects using two vehicles, and one suspect had a unique handgun with a light built into the barrel. Victims are calling for more police presence and stepped up prosecutions. It's tough, it's a tough situation we're in. The circuit attorney's office has issued a statement saying that office is dedicated to prosecuting criminals within the law. That includes a teen who police say is a suspect in at least 20 St. Louis break-ins in a one-month span. He's been jailed since November. Still, the crime wave continues. Andy Banker, Fox 2 News. It's back to class soon for students at Central Visual and Performing Arts High School. The school went virtual after that deadly mass shooting in October. CVPA says in-person classes will begin January 17th and students will have half days for the first two weeks. The school will still have virtual options for those who really need it, along, of course, with counselors and other supports available on site. We'll learn more today about the future of Rosati Kane High School. The St. Louis Archdiocese wanted to close the all girls Catholic High School, but it will, of course, remain open as Rosati Kane Academy. St. Joseph Educational Ministries agreed to sponsor the school and officials plan to hold a news conference to discuss future plans, fundraising efforts and the search for the new school president. Injured Buffalo Bills safety DeMar Hamlin continues making a remarkable improvement. And just in the past hour, we've learned his breathing tube, ha tube has been removed and he's talking again. Doctors at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center first announced big strides yesterday, saying he was able to move his hands and write notes. Doctors say one of his first questions after waking up was who won that game? And, uh, you know, to paraphrase uh, one of our partners, you know, when, when he asked, did we win? The answer is yes, you know, Damar, you won. You've won the game of life. Uh, and that's probably the most important thing out of this. And we really need to keep him at the center uh, of everything else that's going on. And we really want to ensure a good outcome for him. The NFL has officially canceled the game between the Bills and Bengals, and they plan to hold a special league meeting today to discuss possible options for how all this will play out and impact the playoffs. And the power of two's Jordan Williams spoke with a local doctor who used to be in charge of the Rams medical team, and he was also on the ice for a Blues player who had a similar injury back in 1998. In a matter of seconds, medical professionals rushed to the aid of DeMar Hamlin Monday night. The response time was amazing. Dr. Matthew Matava, an orthopedic surgeon at Washington University in St. Louis, works as the head team physician for the St. Louis Blues, was the Rams medical director for 16 years, and heads the NFL's research and innovation team. Given everything, the pressure of the fans, the fact that it was a Monday night game, it was a big game, 
with the playoffs and all that sort of thing. I thought it was incredibly rapid and incredibly efficient. Matava walked me through the detailed plans in place for when an emergency strikes, from every venue having an emergency action plan. Where will the ambulance come in? Where the, where's the nearest emergency room that you're going to be going to a level one trauma center? To hour-long pregame meetings he used to be a part of with the Rams. Here's the signal we will use if we need to have you come to our sideline to assist us. This is the hospital we're going to be going to. Around 30 medical professionals are on hand at each NFL game. The NFL has uh, spared no expense in terms of being prepared both before the season, before the game, as well as during the games. Matava was on the ice when a similar injury happened to a St. Louis Blues Hall of Famer. It happened in 1998 with Chris Pronger. And he took a few, you know, strides skating, all of a sudden he starts leaning over and he dropped. Pronger could be hurting here, guys. He took the slap shot into the chest. This isn't funny. Me and the athletic trainer, Ray Barelli, um, went out on the ice. Um, when you evaluate the player and he was out and fortunately he was resuscitated. As the NFL preps its final week of games before the playoffs, Hamlin's injury likely to loom large, not just for the NFL, but the upcoming XFL season. And now let's head outside to the Lakeside Renovation and Design Weather Deck where meteorologist Lynn Trong is not wearing a jacket. Maybe it's because that nice fire is keeping you warm. It's not feeling too bad out here, Amelia. The sun is out, so I'm really happy. So no jacket, but if you are going to be heading out and about, maybe a light jacket this afternoon. It's beautiful. Lots of sunshine. It's been cloudy. It's been windy lately, and today plenty of sun and winds a lot lighter. 40 degrees right now at the airport. A light breeze out of the west, northwest at five miles an hour, creating a little bit of a wind chill. Feels like it's about 37 degrees at this hour. But if you're standing out in the sunshine, it's going to feel fantastic. Wind speeds calm to very light across the by state right now. Cahokia Heights, a west wind around five miles an hour. Farmington, northwest wind at six. And winds very light in Sparta out of the west. So northwest winds today, but they will come out of the south later today. So that's going to boost temperatures up paired with all that sunshine. Right now, temperatures sitting in the 30s and 40s. 39 degrees in Chesterfield, 43 in Farmington, and 39 degrees in Sparta, 41 in Paris. Perryville. Lots of sunshine, but we are going to see more cloud cover moving on in a later this afternoon, especially tonight. We're talking about some rain chances back in our area, so enjoy the beautiful weather for today. We'll have a little more cloud cover later this afternoon. A high of 47 degrees. That's above normal. Our normal high is 40 degrees. Winds out of the west around 5 up to 10 miles an hour. More clouds tonight. Some scattered showers late tonight into early tomorrow and part of the day on Saturday. Very light nature a high of 37 degrees as we take a look here at the weekend temperatures will be in the 40s on Saturday 42 degrees on Sunday with partly cloudy skies and get ready for a warm-up starting on Monday Amelia thanks Lynn still ahead on the power of two it just keeps going and going and going the struggle to elect a house speaker continues in Washington also ahead 200 million users yes that's the number of how many could be impacted by a Twitter hack Southwest Airlines is still trying to reunite passengers with lost bags. I'm Grady Trimble with Fox Business. Coming up, the latest on that process and what you can do to keep track of your checked bag on your next trip. That's next. And in the wake of that Southwest debacle, the new perk flying over the Delta Airlines next month.
GOP front runner Kevin McCarthy says he is not dropping out of the race for speaker. In fact, he says there is progress being made, but some are doubtful the drama will be resolved today. Madeline Rivera reports from Washington. The fight for House Speaker is in its fourth day, now the longest speaker election since 1859. But GOP frontrunner Kevin McCarthy and his allies are hopeful the deadlock will soon break. There were some breakthroughs uh, yesterday and, and last night. I think we had the most productive talks uh, that we've had all week. As the drama unfolded on the floor, urgent negotiations between GOP holdouts were happening behind closed doors. Among some of the concessions being floated, a vote on term limits and lowering the threshold to force a vote to remove the speaker to a single member. Regardless of these changes, some Republicans say they are not relenting. Congressman-elect Matt Gates says he'll resign from Congress if Democrats strike a deal to elect a moderate Republican for Speaker. I wouldn't be betting on uh, my vote for Kevin McCarthy under almost any circumstance. If adopted, the changes could hamstring McCarthy or any Speaker's ability to lead as they face the threat of expulsion at any point. With such a slim majority, anything that this Speaker tries to do is going to be held up, or at least there's going to be a lot of leverage by a very small fraction within the House. Without a speaker and no member sworn in, the House is unable to function. I actually tried to go to the White House and, and lead a group the other day, and they wouldn't allow me in because I'm a member-elect and technically not a member of Congress right now. Exasperation is settling in with concerns that this fight will stretch into the weekend. Several representative-elects brought their families to the nation's capital to see them get sworn in, but it's unclear when that will take place. In Washington, Mather Rivera, Fox News. And today marks the anniversary of the attack on the nation's Capitol building. President Joe Biden will award the Presidential Citizen Medal to Capitol Police officers and election workers. This comes two years after supporters of the then-President Donald Trump stormed the Capitol in an attempt to stop lawmakers from certifying the 2020 election results. Four people died at the Capitol that day, including one shot by police as she tried to enter a secure area. Five police officers defending the Capitol that day then died in the weeks following. More than 700 people were arrested. As the fallout continues over Southwest's recent meltdown, many customers are still without their luggage following the airline's mass cancellations. Grady Trimble has details on Southwest's plans to get those bags back to their owners. If passengers haven't arranged to pick up their bags at the airport themselves, Southwest is shipping them. They're using FedEx, UPS, even volunteers to get them to passengers. Southwest wouldn't tell me the total number of lost bags they've dealt with during the holiday operational meltdown, but they do expect to have all bags shipped before the end of the week. After that, customers should get them in a matter of days. In addition to doling out refunds and reimbursements, reuniting passengers with their lost bags is just one more huge expense for Southwest Airlines. When nobody in the baggage sort area knows what flights are operating, what flights are not operating, or where the customer is, we have a real cocktail for total confusion here. And we're talking tens of millions of dollars to try to sort it out. We're probably looking at three to four hundred dollars a bag trying to get it back to the customer. Then again, we have the other issue of lost bags. Some bags will never be seen on this planet again. Because nobody wants their check bag lost forever, a lot of frequent flyers are taking matters into their own hands using these Apple AirTags to track their luggage. In fact, Google searches for AirTags for luggage have increased drastically over the past several weeks. And over on Amazon, the number one selling item in the electronics section right now, you guessed it, Apple AirTags. In Chicago, Grady Trimble, Fox Business. And Delta is offering a new perk for passengers, all to sway customers to come do business with them. The airline will be adding free Wi-Fi internet access through a partnership with cellular carrier T-Mobile. Delta says its network will offer the best in-class in-flight connectivity for customers. The rollout will start on February 1st, with more than 700 Delta aircrafts being equipped by the end of the year. International and regional aircrafts will have service by the end of 2024. Coming up next on The Power of Two, hit TV show Abbott Elementary launching a program to send money to schools where teachers can post projects for a chance at funding.
After a couple of days of cloudy conditions across the Bi-State, it's nice to see that sunshine out there. A nice quiet Friday, but we do have rain on the way. I'll let you know when we'll see that rain and how long it will last. Come on.